An increasing problem and challenge for the future is uh, the increasing CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere. And uh, usually we look at it being a problem, but at the same time it's also a chance uh, because it's a carbon source we can use to make useful compounds out of it. And so our motivation is to find new ways to convert CO2 into useful products. We are interested because chemistry cannot do that. So there's no chemical process, no catalyst, which could simply filter out the CO2 from the atmosphere. But biology can do it very efficiently. And this is our motivation to look at the biology of CO2 fixation. So if you think about plants, they're efficient CO2 fixing filters, but they are not fast. And uh, I think there's a chance to improve existing biology with synthetic biology. The problem in existing biological CO2 fixation is that the main enzyme, Rubisco, is a very slow catalyst. So it takes only five or 10 CO2 molecules per second and there's other ways, there's other enzymes that can do the job better. And we have an enzyme in our lab which can fix CO2 at 80 CO2 molecules per second. So it's 20 times faster. And our idea was now take this enzyme and reinvent CO2 fixation on the basis of this new enzyme we have discovered. What we do is we basically have a process which is called metabolic retrosynthesis. So we start to draw metabolic pathways on the paper. We start to think about new ways how to fix CO2 and afterwards we put this pathway into reality. But you need to find enzymes that could actually do all the catalytic steps. And so you need to look into biology, you need to look into microorganisms, you need to look into human, you need to look into plants, you need to find all the individual enzymes that could do the job. And in total at the end it has been 17 enzymes from nine different organisms and actually three enzymes we had to redesign at the computer to do the job better. But it's as important to bring them together and to harmonize them so they can work together as a team. For instance, like really a soccer team. So it's not enough to have good individual players. You need to have a team that wins the championship. And so if you want to fix CO2, you need to have enzymes that work together efficiently. So we've designed several cycles for CO2 fixation. And one of the most attractive cycles that we have designed is a so-called catch cycle that can catch CO2 very efficiently from the atmosphere. So after having found all these different enzymes, uh, you have to put them together and you have to show that your cycle is not only good in theory, but also it's actually operating. So we've taken all these enzymes, put it into an Eppendorf tube, and then we've demonstrated that the cycle can fix CO2 with high resolution mass spectrometry, which can efficiently tell us how fast and how much CO2 we can fix. And for this, we need this method, which can quantify the activity of the cycle in vitro. So of course, it's at the moment a proof of principle it's an in vitro cycle that can fix CO2. The big question is where do we go with this? And uh, there's different options. So one option is that we could think of artificial organelles or artificial leaves in a true bottom-up fashion. And on the other hand, you can also take the cycle eventually and transplant it into living systems. So for instance, equipping algae, equipping eventually plants at some point with such a highly efficient CO2 fixation cycle. With the idea that you can eventually fix CO2 faster or actually need less light energy to fix CO2. So a principal motto at the Max Planck Society is insight must precede application. And what we are doing in the lab is finding new ways, biologically inspired ways, to convert CO2 and capture CO2 into a building block of the future, for instance, for bio-based industry. And so we learn from biology, but we also engineer biology with synthetic methods to create something which you would call synthetic metabolism of the future.